poke pokes a poop and the president too And the fancy grand banker in his three-piece suit The big fat general and all of his troops The truth of the matter is everybody poops My business is picking up dog poop. I go to people's houses on a regular basis and I pick up what the dog leaves behind. Okay. Uh, how did you get into this business? What, what was the, the epiphany that made you become the dog crap collector? You know, the epiphany that got me into this business was working as a welder 10 hours a day with a newborn son and never being able to see him. So I decided I'd need to work for myself. <laughs> And I got the idea from my girl, my ex-girlfriend's mom, who said she has a cousin that did a business like this in Denver, Colorado, called Gross Encounters of the Turd Kind. That's pretty gross. So I thought, hey, I can do that. And uh, I made myself some tools, and off I went. You know, the best part about this business is I get to be outside. I'm relaxed. get to pet the dogs all day long. And it's just a... a a great unpressured business. And what's the worst part of the business? <laughs> the worst part about this business is the dog poop. <laughs> Especially the, uh, how should we say, less than solid poop. Well, some people do have a gag reflex when they deal with dog poop or any kind of poop. Um, for me, it doesn't bother me. Um, I've been doing it for so long, I'm just kind of immune to it. And, uh, Besides, I eat lunch while I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> and can you tell me what sort of things you do to clients that don't pay on time? <laughs> <laughs> well, the best thing I've ever done is I had a client that wouldn't pay me, and I pulled 11 bags of poop out of her yard. And after two months, I decided that's enough. So I collected all the dog poop over a day's route and put it back on her lawn. So... What do you do with the dog poop when you're finished with it? Uh, you know, when we're done picking up the poop, I usually just tie up, tie up the bag and leave it in the customer's trash can for the regular trash pickup. Mm -hmm. The worst job I've ever had picking up poop was a one-time cleanup, and it was for a house in the hills, and I pulled out 27 five-pound buckets of poop from that yard. You couldn't throw a rock in that yard without hitting poop. It was just disgusting. The smelliest time of the year, I would have to say, is all the time. Because when you go to the house on a regular basis, you're always dealing with fresh poop. Yeah. Which means it always smells. Yeah. And yeah. I don't care what the Hollywood celebrities say, poop stinks. Yeah, the most famous clients I've ever had, I would have to say, would be Alicia Moore, uh, more commonly known as Pink. You know, pop celebrity, pop star. Uh, Wayne Brady. I've had uh, sports figures, um, uh, yeah. whew, um, rock bands, uh, Stephen Perkins from uh, Jane's Addiction. Our, our average time is usually about four minutes per stop mm -hmm. on average, not including commercial accounts. Mm -hmm. Those can take upwards to an hour, hour and a half, depending on the size of the community. Well, in our heyday, when we had five routes going, uh, most routes were averaging about a hundred stops per week, and that made for a you know for a five-hour workday, you know five hours, five stops an hour. So it was pretty easy and relaxing, and yet there were still a lot of stops in there where you could make a decent amount of money. Could you tell me, um, have you got any dog poop memorabilia at home to remind you of your, how you made your fortune? Dog poop memorabilia. I, I have all of my articles that's ever been written about me. All the pictures, all the interviews, all the game shows I've been on. I've got copies of all those. So I guess that's my, yeah, you know, memorabilia yeah. for this business. You know, I I think I'll retire someday. Um, I always call myself semi-retired now because I, you know, I don't work that much. Um, but someday I will. I'll pass along to my son or sell it all out completely. Okay. Are there any rival dog poop collectors, and do you fling dog, dog poop at each other? <laughs> you know, whenever I run across someone on the street, yeah, I try to load it, throw it at them. But no, there's um, there is some competition out there uh, in this city, not that much. I welcome more businesses to start because uh, there's a lot of people to reach, 
And the more people marketing the business, the more notoriety it gets. Yeah, I actually took a survey several years ago about what kind of clients I have and why they use our service. Um, most of the time, they're busy and they don't want to deal with it. Uh, a small percentage, like 10 to 15 percent, are admittedly lazy. So, are you a dog lover yourself? I am a dog lover. I have, oh, I'm down to one dog now. I have a, a Jack Russell Terrier that my wife found in the trash can when it was just a couple of days old. Uh, we used to have a, a black lab, but he died last year at 16 years old. <laughs> oh, we missed him. But uh, yeah, we, we yeah. definitely love dogs. And you do collect your own dogs too? No, I do not collect my dogs too. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I pick up after my own dog until I can find a service in the area that will do it for me. You know, there are three franchises out there right now, major franchises. Two of them probably bigger than the other one. Um, I'm not against franchises altogether, but I don't think anyone needs to have a franchise to do this business. It's not rocket science. It's picking up poop and a little marketing on the side. Anybody can do that. Yeah, when some of these franchises first started, they were charging upwards of $65,000 to buy into the franchise, and it didn't come with any customers. They had to do their own marketing. In fact, they had to put in, from what I hear, up to $25,000 a year in marketing just to make money for a franchise owner. I mean, to me, that was ridiculous. So I, I wrote a book on how you can start your own dog poop pickup service for as little as $1,000 to start with. Yeah, the name of the book is called The Professional Scoop Master. A guide to starting and running your own dog poop pickup service. You know, I talk to people all around the country and sometimes in other countries about this business. And the, the number one piece of advice I give is treat it like a business. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It takes work. It takes time. It takes dedication. And you got to always push forward and have a plan of action to work this business. It doesn't happen automatically. I've been bitten five times in 25 years. Four of them, four of them were accidents. I'll tell you about that in a sec. One of them was a vicious dog. <laughs> he was just a, I call him tri dog because he had three legs. Two back legs, one one forward leg. He'd always jump up and try to take bites at me. And one time I was there and I just I just wasn't paying attention and he jumped up and bit my nipple. Put a hole right through it. <laughs> the other times were just accidents. Uh, I always pet the dogs and leave a biscuit when I leave. And I was at this great Dane's house. And I forgot to give him a biscuit. And I, as I was walking out, he was barking. It's like, where's my biscuit? And I stopped right in mid bark. And of course my butt is right about there. And he kind of he kind of nipped my butt a little bit. But he, he, he stopped and kind of like went down and kind of put his tail between his leg like he was sorry. And it's like, oh I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bite you. And he did. So I gave him the biscuit, he was fine. I'm just still getting over being bit in the nipple. Um, it's fashionable you... nowadays. Put <laughs> yeah, a ring through it and you're all set. Yeah, I talk to scoopers all around the country and we hear stories and exchange them all the time. We have a convention once a year where Cooper scoopers gather together and talk crap all weekend. Uh, There's a, a service in Florida, I think it was, uh, Yard Guards on Duty. I'm pretty sure it was that one, where the pooper scooper actually went in a customer's yard and didn't take a leak. He took a dump at a customer's yard. And the customer was home. And the customer saw it. And yes, the customer complained. And I think they cut the service right after that. Sometimes I'd put on a show for the customers. Um, a long time ago when I first started, my accountant actually uh, asked me if I could do something like that. And what I did is I took my bucket, took my shovel and some poop on it, flung it up in the air and did a 360 and then caught it in the bucket. The only time I ever tried it. I figured I got it right the first time. I'm not going to attempt that again. Other times we'll, we'll try to toss it for distance and try to make it. My wife and I work together. Sometimes we'll kind of, you know, go back and forth on it. And what's the biggest distance you've got? I never really officially measured it, but I would say about 15 feet. 15 feet. Yeah. So you could enter the dog's poop Olympics. Yeah, if they had one, I could. 
I'd you, probably win. Yeah, you'd probably be champion. Hey, speaking of Dog Poop Olympics, uh, when our association, APOS, uh, puts on the convention, we actually have what's called a turd herding contest. <laughs> Where we go out there for time, trying to get as much poop as we can. Oh, okay. But we use fake poop for that. Okay. And what's the prize? The prize is bragging rights for a year. <laughs> oh, you get, a, you get a nice trophy too, actually. And have you ever won that? I have never won. I've got several second places, several third places. My wife got several second places. Never won, though. <laughs> No, dog poop's been great. I mean, it's been, we've been making a living off this for over 25 years, and we continue to do so. And it's just a, a great way to go. I mean, there's no bosses looking over me, except for my customers. Uh, I don't see too many people. I had a lot of dogs, play with a lot of dogs. It's just a great life. Okay. Cool. Good on you. <laughs> yeah, good in. Thanks. Okay, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, the one, one good advantage about this business is you can fart while you're working and nobody knows the difference. <laughs>